I've been thinking, I want to try and have a relationship with Ren Chan. Wizards blinked in chorus. It was a poker night or day because the school was just out. Well, they played long tournaments. Really? Love asked. What brought this up? Naruto shrugged. I've been thinking this and that. I'm practically a single now, right? I have dated now Chan and had a brief experience with Ryo Chan, yet the one person who I have not even made out with, minus times we practiced, is her. You practiced making out? Lisa asked raising an eyebrow. Naruto blushed. We were kids. She had seen couple teenagers doing it and told me about it and then we just did it. He laughed sheepishly. How much? Or how far? We never got past the closed mouth kissing stage. We were so young at the time that we didn't know what else there was. And I started coughing blood in the middle of the kiss. Nothing turns a girl's off like a mouth full of blood. Well, most of them at least. So, now that you've dumped your human girlfriend, you think that you can just waltz back soul society and have your way with her? Love snorted. Boy, I know women, I and I know if you ever show your face back there again, you will be murdered. First by your old girlfriend, and then by this hope-to-be girlfriend. Well, I should get back there first. He thought carefully. It was just a thought anyway. It's not like I got any chances with love. He folded his hand inside. It's the Yurhara curse. Where are those two? Kensei muttered angrily and glared at the entrance. They had sent Hiyori and Mashiro to get some snack for the poker night, but they hadn't returned yet. That's odd. Haki muttered and also looked up. What is it, Haki? Harako asked. It feels like several hollows had just appeared outside. Everyone looked at the entrance. Anything big? No, no. He shook his head. Just small jillions but the amount. It just keeps increasing. I wonder what's going on outside. Lisa whispered. They all exited the factory together just in time to witness how another hollow appeared out of Waco Mundo and started searching for a prey. It must have been its animal instinct that told it to avoid the group that was standing right next to it. Hey, Get away you weak ass loser. Hiyori kicked a hollow onto the ground and destroyed it in the process. What the hell is going on? She demanded panting hard. She was carrying shopping bags in her hands. All of a sudden all these hollows popped out. I wonder what's causing this. Maybe it's a game? Mashiro suggested. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Just then, they saw a gigantic dark-skinned human running past them, leading one of the hollows away from the shops. Did I see things, or did that human just try and lead that one hollow away? Can humans do something like that? Have we been underground too long? Then she shook her head. Mashiro only tilted her head. Do you think I should buy that red dress or the yellow one? Hiyori sighed. This was getting her nowhere. Hey. What the hell are you doing? Ichigo demanded from Ishida Uryu when he had just realized the effects of the bet he had agreed on. Now each and every friend he had was in trouble. He was so going to beat that smug bastard to a bloody pulp. I simply wanted to prove my superiority over Shinigami, and if it means this, I'm willing to go through with it. Ishida answered simply, satisfied with himself. And besides, do you really have time to deal with me? Suzu. Karen. Ichigo yelled and sprinted off. Khan. Let's go. Two Ichigos disappeared leaving battle-ready Ishida behind. Fool. If he paid a little more attention to his surroundings, he would realize that his family isn't the only one with high spiritual powers. He turned around. Just watch me, Sensei. I will avenge you. Hey. I think that centipede. Kensei answered and reached out, taking some chips into his hands. No way. It's obviously an earthworm. Naruto argued. What's the difference? Harako asked. You can't tell a difference between a centipede and an earthworm? Naruto asked. Pass that bowl to me. Wizards were sitting on top of the factory roof, enjoying the day and a view of hollows running wildly. Anyway, watch this. Kensei picked up a brick into his hand and backed away a few steps. This is how men do it. He screamed and slammed the brick on some passing hollow, destroying it. And that's how you beat a centipede. That was an earthworm. Naruto argued and picked up another prick. That pig over there. He pointed at another hollow. Ten says he can't do it. Hiyori snickered, she had Mashiro had finally got back. Twenty. Rose added. Lisa closed her eyes and thought. I'll take that bet. What? Both looked at her in surprise. I will prove a point. She corrected her glasses and walked up to Naruto and leaned into his ear. If you miss this, I will make you do that with me. 
Got that? Naruto paled considerably. No pressure. She smirked and walked away. Home run. Naruto threw the prick fast head hard into Pig Hollow, destroying it in the process. When the hollow disappeared and cheers and curses flew around him, Naruto turned around. We really are the most boring group there is. Everyone shrugged. You get used to it after time. And that's scary. By the way Lisa said suddenly. Shouldn't you be out there, doing something? What? Well there is a lot of people in this town with higher Iatsu levels. Shouldn't you be protecting them or something? Nah. Naruto waved his hand. It's not like anyone close to me is who couldn't protect themselves. And Ichigo can deal with these ones himself. So you're not worried about your girlfriend for example? Of course not. Naruto snapped so quickly that it could actually be heard. Then laughed nervously. I think we need more drinks. I'll go get some. He jumped off the roof and sprinted away. Ten says he completely forgot about her just a minute ago. Hiyori said plainly. Hey. While Orham was fighting in the schoolyard for Tatsuki, Sato in the playground for Karen, Ishida shooting hollows down somewhere between, Ichigo running around randomly, not knowing what to do while Rukia run around trying to find him, Ryo and Michiru were walking home together as always. After the breakup, Michiru tried her best to cheer up her best friend. You want to go that new cake shop? She asked happily. I can't eat anything too heavy. You know that. Ryo answered quietly. I need to be on my top form for my race next week. Yes, Michiru sighed. I appreciate the gesture, Michiru, but I just don't feel like doing anything now, she sighed. Just then, a hollow landed behind them, breaking the ground underneath it. Girls jumped back shocked. What's going on? Michiru asked quietly. I don't know. Ryo answered and took a step back instinctively. The air was moving. Or something was moving. Something big. And it was getting closer. Run Machiru run. What the other girl asked confused when Hollow prepared to smack her heart into the ground. Machiru. Ryo screamed when suddenly a figure rushed past her, past Machiru and smashed with that thing that she couldn't see but knew it was there. Are you two okay? She raised her eyes to see familiar blonde hair flowing in the wind. Naruto? Ryo whispered. What just happened? Suddenly, Naruto jumped again and with almost inhuman speed, kicked something that hit the wall so hard that it broke into rubble. I need you two to go. It's not safe here for the time being. Let's go, Ryo-chan. Michiru took her friend's hand and pulled. We must go. Ryo didn't move. Naruto jumped again incredibly high and took a hold of something before throwing it over his shoulder and slamming it into the ground. The something seemed to hit Naruto onto the back, so his shirt was ripped and a red line appeared in his back. Naruto. It's okay. Naruto's voice whispered as he stood up, ignoring the wound. I had worse. Then he noticed a metal pipe in the ground and picked it up like a sword. Go now. He charged forward. Raya watched as Naruto disappeared into distance, fighting with someone obviously. Machiru wanted to go. But she didn't. She wanted to follow Naruto. To follow him to be with him. She took a step forward and was about to run after him when something landed on top of them again. Michiru hit her head into concrete and lost consciousness. Michiru. Ryo screamed and stood up quickly. Then, like a curtain had just been pulled away, some big monster with a white carnival mask looked down to them. What are you? She whispered. Dinner. Hollow screamed and opened its mouth ready to eat its prey. Ryo took hold of Michiru. She needed to get her to safety. No matter what. Michiru was her friend. She needed to save her she took hold of her body and carried her away. For some reason, she was very light. She took couple steps and she was already at the end of the road. She looked over her shoulder to see that Hollow was at the other end looking equally dumbfounded. What happened? She asked herself when she glanced at her feet. Her shoes no, her feet they were on fire. She instinctively jumped like they were burning before she realized that they were not. Golden flames around her feet didn't seem to hurt at all. In fact, she felt better than ever. Meanwhile Hollow seemed to have recovered and charged after her. And then, three more appeared over the walls. Four altogether. Ryo gently left Michiru lie on the street before she faced the Hollow and narrowed her eyes. Don't screw with me or my friends. The flames changed color to dark blue. She charged forward with her newly found powers. The speed was uncanny. She felt like a feather in a wind. She easily passed all hollows to their backside and to the other end of the street where she turned around. 
She would beat those things to a bloody pulp for messing with her friend like this. She charged forward and kicked the first one to its back, slamming it to a nearby wall, breaking its mask and destroying it in the process. Let's go. She jumped on couple meters high to Hollow's eye level and smirked. Take this. She turned in the middle of the air, kicking another hollow to its head. Two down, two to go. She landed between the two. These things seemed to have some intelligence because they put up their guard, blocking almost the whole street both ends. She needed to think how to beat these things with her newly found powers. She checked her flames. They seemed to have reverted back to a goldish flame. Hollows inched closer. She didn't have many options. Kick the ground twice before leaping backwards and then go around. A voice told her. Hollows jumped on top of her, smashing her between them and the ground. Expect that she wasn't there anymore. She was standing on top of them. Then she raised her knee up and then stumped with all her might onto those hollows, smashing right through them. After they had disappeared, the street was ruined and she was exhausted, but Michiru was safe and was even starting move. So everything was good. Excellent work. Ryo turned around ready to fight even when she had no more strength to raise her feet. You have a great power, concerning that you're a human. A black cat was sitting on the street and talking. Cat talking? Ryo whispered before she collapsed. Yuruchi sighed. Humans have so limited capacity to believe things when they see them. Tessai. She looked over her shoulder. How's that child? Nothing too serious, Yuruchi don't know. Shall I take her back to her home? Sure. Yururu. I need you to carry this girl back to the shop with us. She nodded at lying Ryo. Can you do that? Why yes. Yururu nodded and easily picked up Ryo's unconscious body. I I'll do my best. Yuruchi looked up. Now, where is that Naruto? She asked. Hey. Move. 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 Naruto made his way through the playground, hitting every hollow out of his way. Even armed with just a metal pipe, he was dangerous opponent, now that he knew his limits, he knew what to do. Wow there, son. There's lots of more where those come from. Uehara slashed the pipe away with his cane. Dad. Naruto panted. What's going on here? Little bet between your classmates. Nothing serious. A huge hollow almost landed on top of them. Kizuk simply pointed his fingers at it and said. Hato number 15 Kiritorai, A.N. Cutting lightning. Flash of light in the hollow was slashed in half vertically. You call this nothing? It's like a frontier out here. Naruto yelled. Then he noticed Chad lying on his feet. Good timing. I need you to give me a hand. There are few interesting people living in this town, your friend included. Could you carry him to our home? There's still one more left that I need to go check on. And do me another favor. Don't fight against any more hollows than you absolutely have to. Why? There's something I to need try. Kizuk smirked. Don't worry. I won't allow anyone to get hurt too badly. And before Naruto had a chance to refuse or to say anything, Kizuk disappeared. How can he do that and I can't? He yelled frustrated and picked his friend up. Damn you're heavy. Maybe you should start dieting. Damn, this will take forever. Hey. Orahim cracked her eyes open. A weird zealing greeted her. Confused of what was going on or where she was, she sat up slowly. It was empty room expect a familiar person sitting on the other side. Huh? Sato-kun? She asked. You're awake? Morning. Chad muttered. Am morning. Then Orahim noticed another person slowly sitting up behind Chad. Kunita-san? Inu-san? Sato-san? Ryo looked around. Where are we? Beats me. Chad answered. So, you're finally awake? Everyone turned around to watch your Kizuk smiling to them arms folded in his sleeves. Welcome. W who? Orahim asked. Your san Ryo asked. What's going on here? You know him? Chad asked. He is Nar your san's father. She answered slightly bitterly. Then she remembered today's events. Your san Your son. He's. All right. Kizuk assured her. I met him few minutes ago. I don't think he even realizes his wound. I give him worse injuries when in training. I was sad to hear that you broke up with him. I always thought you were good to him. Orham and Chad watched when Ryo quickly nodded to this. Did you bring us here? Ryo continued to be the one to talk. Indeed I did. Kizuk smiled again. Now wherever shall I begin he tilted his head slightly. Before you do could you tell me Ryo gulped. Is this related to that what Naruto couldn't tell me? Very much so. 
Kizuk nodded and smiled cunningly. Well, then. Shall I reveal what's behind a curtain of mysteries? Hey. Ow ow ow. Naruto cursed when Hiyori and Mashiro tightened bandages around his body. After he had gently thrown Chad's body to his father's shop, he had decided to go back to Wizard Hideout. Then some huge hollow had attacked him on his way. The hollow itself wasn't a problem, but it spit acid like liquid, and it hurt like hell when it touched the skin. He had gotten few burns. When he looked over a doll that was set lying next to him, he started thinking. I might need a new gigai after this. This one is getting seriously banged up. Harako quietly kicked the doll, and an arm fell off. I'll say. He snorted. They were on the roof again. So, did you save your girlfriend yet? Lisa asked boredly. Hollows had started to gather around the one area over the park. Naruto blinked. Crap. He cursed and stood up. I need to go find her again. No need. Harako interrupted. Tessai picked her up. What? How you know? Naruto asked. I followed ya. Harako answered smartly. I was bored and decided to keep an eye on you. You really need to learn to stay more alert of your surroundings. I could have attacked you any time I wanted. Naruto sat down pouting. I knew you were there. He muttered like a five-year-old. Hate to interrupt your discussion, but it appears that something big is coming out of Garganta. Rose said quickly, and everyone turned around to see how a huge rip was about to appear in the middle of the air. Aminos? Hiyori asked. Just a jillion. Rose confirmed. And it appears that Naruto-kun's friends are right next to it. What? Naruto stood up and looked into the direction hollows were gathering. I see Rukia-chan, Ichigo twice some spectacle guy Shida Uryu a Quincy. Quincy? Lisa asked and glanced at him. How do you know? He's my classmate also. Sticks to himself. Good at home economics. Friends with you? I don't think I changed any words with him after I came to his class. Naruto explained. It's just that I used to be a vice captain. And before that, I helped at Ford Squad's hospital. In both cases, sometimes you needed to pay attention to everyone around you without paying attention to anyone and figuring who everyone was and what they thought without asking. Just like from Jiraiya-san's mouth. Rose laughed quickly. He said those things to me when I became his second. Well, he always ranted on and on about how to do his job. He kept a brief break inside. Anyway, when I got bored in class, I spent time trying to figure out things like that. What Kigo had eaten. Or how many girls Mizuro had talked to past week. Most of them were pretty straightforward. But this guy, he was the hardest. So that's why I was so interested about him. And you found out that he was a Quincy? Lisa ended. That's a dusty topic. Yeah. Haki whispered. I remember. I was a seated officer by the time when they became a problem. Hiyori huffed. Those bastards in 46 just decided that those humans were dicking around their territory and killing hollows on their own accord. A girl shouldn't use such language, Hiyori. Love smacked her into back of her head. But I have to agree with 46 somewhat. They were humans. They should have just let us do what we were trained to do. Let's not get high and mighty over there. Kenzei pointed out. You often judged our actions during those times. Why don't we just agree tad every human in Shinigami sucks. Everyone was quiet for a while. Hi. They said in chorus. Even Ruto who shook his head suddenly. I need more friends. He muttered when his phone rang. Naruto. This is Tessai. Crude man voice exclaimed. I'm just to inform you that owner wishes all of you to stay out of this. What's going on? Naruto asked. He will explain when you personally get here, Naruto don't know. Naruto sighed and nodded. Okay. He closed the phone and turned around. I need to go now. Dad wants all of you to just watch. He shrugged. I wonder how we can do that. Hiyori muttered. Yeah, disposing few worms really is something we want to do. I thought so. Naruto sighed and jumped back into his gig eye. Haki could you reattach my arm? Hey. Hollows are gathering. Ishida said with angry voice. Ichigo had just caught up with Rukia, Khan and himself, and ranted how he had gotten everyone in the town into danger just because of this. Then they noticed the huge rip in the air, and that hollows were gathering around it. Ishida didn't bother to wait but ran straight towards it. Hold on. Ichigo yelled. Are you scared, Kurosaki? Ishida asked mockingly. If you are, then just stay there and watch when I win this match. He shot a bunch of arrows into the flock of hollows, destroying a bunch of them. 
This way, Hollows, the last Quincy, Ishida Uryu will be your opponent. You still care about this stupid match. Why is it so important to win? Ichigo yelled. And what's with the last Quincy stuff? The Quincy became extinct over 200 years ago. Rukia began her explanation. Or rather they were terminated by Shinigami. It was an extremely hard decision for the Shinigami to make. New voice entered the conversation, and everyone turned to face Naruto who was sitting on the edge over them. They had to terminate the Quincy. Naruto. Urahara. Naruto landed between them. Yo. He raised his hand to his common greeting. What are you doing here? My dad told me to. He answered and looked up to Ishida who kept killing hollows. What you mean they had to terminate? Ichigo yelled. Naruto sighed and explained what he knew which left Ichigo stunned and determined to talk Ishida some sense. That naivety was Ichigo's greatest strength, charm point and weakness. And currently he was about to get himself killed when jumping in the middle of all those hollows. Idiot. Naruto sighed and leaned to the railing on top of the stairs with Khan and Rukia. On his current level, Ichigo is no match for all those hollows. Rukia glanced at him quickly. How you know? Stay sharp. Naruto, Senju Naruto, the vice captain snapped to the surface suddenly. Don't lose your concentration. Rukia didn't know if it was his tone or what, but she snapped back to the play so naturally that she even reached out for her sword. Did you hide your Zanpakuto into your dress? Naruto asked smugly and Rukia blushed embarrassed. Yes, shut up. Naruto grinned when the rip started to open up, and a huge masked face pushed itself through. It's here. Naruto. What's that huge thing? Ichigo yelled from the further away. Idiot. Naruto yelled when a hollow jumped on his back. Don't lose your focus. Ichigo was about to turn around when bullets came through the air, destroying the hollow. Gee good evening. Yururu bowed shyly. Jinta home run. Red-haired brat smacked another hollow into pieces, and Tessai crashed another one with a strong palm strike. Kurosaki-san, we came to give you a hand. Kizuka appeared out of smoke and waved his fan. Slipper hat. Ichigo gasped. While Yuhara shop slob minimum paid workers disposed the hollows, the owner just fanned himself like it was just another day in the park. We will deal with the trash. You two should concentrate yourself on the big one. And by the way, I'm sorry but we're running out of time. Ichigo and Ishida turned their attention towards the Minos that was about to step out of the Garganta. Meanwhile, Kisuk stepped next to Naruto. You better go and help them. He yelled loudly and then he added with a low voice. You know what to do? His son nodded back. Little as possible. That's my boy. Kisuk patted his head and handed him a wooden sword. It's a special sword that allows you to fight hollows. He explained. Naruto rushed through the crowd in time to hear Rukia's voice trying to stop them from doing this, but his father knew what to do with her. He used a simple bakudo to bind her on her place. Ichigo charged like an idiot straight towards Mino's feet, only to be kicked down by it without it even realizing. Kurosaki. Ishida yelled when he was about to hit the ground hard, but Naruto came out of nowhere and caught him before that could happen. Are you okay? Naruto asked. That was pretty stupid, charging straight like that. Exactly. What were you thinking? Ishida screamed. I'm okay. Thanks Naruto. I owe you one. Ichigo stood up. It really is huge. Don't ignore me. What were you thinking? Well Ichigo looked serious. I thought that if I were to chop his beat first and then work my way up until I could reach its mask. He explained. What do you think this is? Daruma Atashi. You can't do that. Then he looked at Naruto who seemed to understand the idea, even if the face was unrecognizable behind the mask. And don't you start. He cleared his throat and took the charge. Now that your Hara-san is here to help us, we should. Charge. Both Naruto and Ichigo charged towards the Minos, forgetting all plans and ideas. Don't do that. Ishida screamed after them but it was too late. Ichigo managed to scratch the huge thing before it simply knocked him down again. Naruto had climbed up a tree, but his Bakken was still just a Bakken. He landed a solid hit, but it hardly left a bruise. Then he noticed a small description. This wooden sword is just a prototype. If you try to use it against something bigger than a deer rank hollow, it won't do any damage. Damn you bastard he hit the ground hard. Hey. I completely forgot about that. Kizuk was holding his laughter. Pranking his son was so funny. Hey. Naruto, are you okay? Ichigo ran to him and helped him up. Yeah, I think so. He nodded. Again? No. 
Ishida stepped right front of them, blocking them from doing that. Calm down both of you and let's form a plan. He guided Ichigo's sword away to step closer. When he did, his bow suddenly enforced like crazy. What a. Maybe we should try to so one of us is a decoy. That's a good plan. Ichigo nodded excited. Ishida, you cool what's up with your bow? It's huge. Just listen. Ishida realized the power within Ichigo. We might be able to defeat that thing. But I need both of you to help me. Be sure. Naruto nodded. Okay Ichigo agreed. A. Meanwhile on an overwalk far away, Chad, Orham and Ryo were watching what was happening. Can you see Ishida with Ichigo and Naruto? He asked from his companions. Yes Orham answered. Ryo agreed by nodding. Please watch from here, he said. Orham whispered. Watch and choose what path to walk. I can't believe he just wants us to do this. While they are facing that huge thing? Ryo whispered agonizingly. Calm down, Chad whispered. He said that nothing would happen to them. But I didn't know. Ryo whispered. When I first suspected something, I thought it had something to do with the delinquents. Not anything like this nothing like this. What should we do Orham whispered on Chad's other side. He looked back and forward between the two, just as confused, but not just showing it outside. A. Now. We can fight. Ishida yelled. I'm not going with this. Naruto backed away slowly when he watched Ishida aiming his huge arrow towards the Minos. That wasn't the problem. The problem was how he had strapped Ichigo's katana on his head looking like an idiot. He's pretty stupid, isn't he? Ichigo asked. What? Ishida jumped up shocked at their insubordination. Stop complaining. I need Kurosaki to release his spirit power much as he can in this pose, so I can shot an absurdly strong arrow. You're Harasan. I need you to give us some cover while we prepare for this. Then he turned back to Ichigo. And don't let your incredible Riyatsu twos uselessly. Naruto and Ichigo looked at him suspiciously. Dude, don't, like, say ooze. Ishida ignored that. Now, Kurosaki. Maximize your Riyatsu output and take hold of your sword. How? He asked. Even Naruto felt like falling down. You don't know how? He screamed before Ishida had a chance. Dude, that's lame. Even I think so. How have you fought hollows until now? Ishida screamed. Instinct. While Ichigo and Ishida ranted about his powers, Naruto kept his eyes on Minos. Not because Ishida had ordered so. But because even if it was just as small for Aminos, it was still Aminos. Wrong move and it would be all over. Guys. He yelled. Mr. Daruma Atashi is doing something. Both Ichigo and Ishida turned around when it started loading at zero. Naruto looked over at his father. Zero at this level would probably burn him but only lightly. But Ichigo and Ishida would be turned into ashes. Yet, Kisuk just stayed still, like he was following a football game. Don't screw with me, old man. He muttered but turned to face the hollow. Zero was almost ready. Kurosaki. What are you doing? Ichigo charged right forward, gaining Mino's attention. Then, the Zero was fired. That idiot. Naruto yelled and was about to stop him when he felt something binding him. He looked over his shoulder to see his father pointing fingers at him. The message was clear. Stand down. Naruto nodded and the binding ended. He would just watch from sidelines when Ichigo fought back the Zero with pure resilience. When he shot back his own Riyatsu damaging the Minos. Naruto felt the burst throwing everything around. It wasn't destroyed, but it quickly started feeling like running away. Naruto watched as it took hold of the edges of the rip and started to cover himself with it. That I have never seen before. Victory. Ichigo screamed like he had just run a marathon. Incredible. Ishida gasped. Superb indeed. Tessai nodded. I can see what owner sees in him. On a rooftop, far away, wizards were bored. A Shinigami fighting against a hollow. Who hadn't seen that before? That was amazing. Naruto commented as he walked up to Ichigo. You actually fought back Aminos all by yourself. Ichigo didn't answer. He just glared at Ishida. I cleaned up your mess for you. And I'm still waiting for the thanks. Naruto stepped next to him and looked at Ishida too. Ishida closed his eyes and sighed. Fine, thaw. Suddenly, Ichigo collapsed on the ground. Ichigo. Naruto yelled. What are you doing? This isn't funny. Ishida yelled. What the hell? Ichigo screamed. I can't move. Naruto watched from sidelines when Ichigo lost the control over his Riyatsu. 
it had happened to him before. Unfortunately, there wasn't a full ceiling team in medics waiting on standby here. He had to do something when he felt another binding again. What the hell was his father thinking? Suddenly, Ishida stepped forward and activated his bow. It was ridiculous sized and very unstable. Then he started firing arrows into the thin air, one after another, while ranting about just paying back and hating shenigmuses. Some kids were just amazingly stubborn. Well, it seemed to be working so he shouldn't interfere. Then, it became quiet. The battle was won. Ishida collapsed from exhaustion right next to Ichigo. Well, you two really make a good team. He laughed as he walked next to them. He even moved the mask enough for them to see his smiling face. Shut up. Ichigo muttered. And help us. Naruto turned around laughing loudly and hid his face again. Why don't you two deepen your bond while lying there? I need to get going. He tightened his hand around the bakken he was holding. I have a skull to crack. He laughed devilishly. He walked next to his father who was still standing next to the collapsed Rukia. You cunning fox. He whispered so quietly that she wouldn't hear. This is vital for both Kurosaki-san and us. Urahara answered and turned around and loudly exclaimed. Hue. It's over. That really scared me. Let's go home. I could use some nice tea and crackers. They walked away, leaving heroes of the day, in the park. Don't leave US here. Naruto. Slipper hat. Anyone. Ichigo's screams filled the air. Naruto, Kizuk began. What do you think will happen now? Twelve squad scanners must have picked this up. They will send someone to investigate, and they will most likely find Rukia-chan before long. He looked over his shoulder at the girl who was trying to stand up. You know what that means. We must stay low until the dust settles and search parties leave. Naruto sighed. I could use this time to practice my bankai. Take all the time you need. Kizuk whispered. All the time you need. A few days later in school, Ishida opened the classroom door, still covered by bandages. Ishida? What happened to you? Teacher asked. There was a moment of silence. I fell down the stairs. He whispered and corrected his blesses. Blame. Everyone thought the same thing, but teacher quickly dismissed him and continued the lesson. That's even lamer excuse. Someone yelled. Don't care. Teacher brushed it off. Okay. Let's begin. The class ended and the lunch began. Ichigo made Ishida to come with him up to the roof, while Rukia made her way downstairs deep in thought. She had waited for too long already. Finding a solitude place, she sat up on a tree and thought of what to do. You can't think that through. She turned around to see Urahara Kun standing on the branch above hers. Urahara. Why aren't you in school? Rukia demanded. Well obviously because I'm sick. Naruto laughed and waved his fan. And back to the matter at hand, no, you can't think it through. What? Whatever excuse you're thinking so you can go on and run away. Naruto answered. You wouldn't make it far even if you tried. So what am I supposed to do? I gave my powers to Ichigo. If higher-ups find him, they will execute him. That is if they can find him and if they can kill him. Naruto pointed out. Ichigo isn't that weak. You don't understand. There are some serious people in there. Ichigo may be strong, but he's still just an ant compared to some people. She saw Naruto's eyes under the hat. Like your dear Naisama? He asked. Rukia's eyes shot open. How what who are you? Naruto looked around the tree. They are coming. He whispered. She quickly turned around to see group of girls looking up to her. Kajiki-san. Do you want to eat lunch with us? Rukia felt like hitting Naruto, who she thought was just as annoying as his father, but he had disappeared somewhere. Kachiki-san. Orhim yelled getting Rukia's attention. Hey. What I'm curious about is why she isn't back yet. Naruto asked while eating dinner with his family. Normally, Shinigami's powers should have returned by now many times in fact. I wonder what's wrong. Maybe she's just too weak. Jinta suggested bored. But then she should been dead or something. But I felt it. Her powers are slowly diminishing. Like something is sealing them away. Then he cleared his throat. But on the other note, he looked across the table. Why is Yoru Ba here? Who are you calling Ba? Yoruchi narrowed her cat eyes. And back to the original discussion, Kisuk, haven't you told him? Told me what? It kind slipped from my mind. Yurhara laughed nervously. What slipped from your mind? What you not telling me? Just then he felt an unknown Riyatsu spiking up somewhere near. That was a vice captain's Riyatsu who. He's not alone. 
Yuruchi pointed out. Naruto felt how Ishida's Riyatsu spiked up too. He was engaging whoever this first one was. And if he really tried, he could sense a third one. And that one he recognized. Kachiki Taichu. What's going on? He jumped up. Dad, what did you do? Hey. Meanwhile Ishida shot an arrow at Renji, who was forced to jump back out of shock. Who the hell are you? I'm just a classmate. He answered and corrected his glasses. But I still can't allow two armed men to attack unarmed girl. I'll be your opponent. Who Renji smirked. I don't know what you are, human, but I know this. He raised his Zanpakuto. You're no match for me. Hey. Why you did what? Naruto whispered when Ishida's Riyatsu disappeared. You sealed the Togoku inside her soul. He screamed and jumped over the table, grabbed his father from collar, and slammed him onto the opposite wall. What the hell is matter with you? And what I said to take care of her. Not to make her a part of your stupid plans. What has happened has happened. Kisuke answered darkly. And our survival isn't stupid. So you went and made Rukia-chan K an Anakis legacy, as pawn? If you want it so crudely to be announced, then yes. Naruto raised his hand to a hit, but then he felt another spike. Ichigo is there now. He whispered and drew his father aside. I need to go and help them. He was about to exit his gig I win. Bakudo number 61. Rikujikoro. Six rods of lighting surrounded him and he was stopped on his place. What the hell? Naruto screamed as he tried to struggle but in vain. I'm sorry Naruto. Kizuk whispered as he used a carefully aimed punch into his gut to knock him out. But as your father, I will do what I have to in order to protect you and everyone else in my family. Sleep now. You team and Naruto fell limb and unconscious. Kisuk sighed sadly when he released the Bakudo. It will end shortly. He walked out of the door. Where are you going, owner? Tessai asked as he picked Naruto's body up. To oversee this to the end. Kisuk answered and disappeared. Ichigo woke up into feeling of something was crushing him. Sharp flashes of pain run through him that were under this crushing feeling. What did he do last night? He should really stop fighting with those hollows. That damn Rukia. All was causing him trouble. He really should beat her to the ground once to teach how it felt to be stabbed stabbed Rukia Rukia. He shot his eyes open. Good morning, Shinigami Dono. Why? Uh? Ichigo kicked Tessai off him screaming like a stuck pig. Who the hell are you? Where the hell I am? I see our guest has awoken. Kizuk stepped inside the room, waving his fan. Good morning, Kurosaki-san. And Naruto's slipper fan father? Ichigo asked. Is this your house? And you're the one who saved me. It really is and I really did. Kizuk smiled before snapping his fan. I brought you here after you had collapsed. And that isn't the reaction I expected to hear. Almost like you didn't want to be saved. Ichigo didn't answer. Just touched his wounds that reminded him of his failure yesterday. Oh yeah. Ishida. Ishida was there too. Is he here too? Nope. He is not. Kizuk answered. When he did lose a lot of blood, his wounds weren't that serious. Even if we'd left him there, he wouldn't have died for at least two days. After I offered my help, he refused me flat out. He did show concerns about you, Kurosaki-san. Ishida was worried about me? Ichigo snorted. Long as he's okay. He wanted me to take care of you. Kizuk answered. He said that if we wanted to have a chance to be them, it wouldn't be him. It would be you. You must save Kachiki-san. Flash of Rukia walking inside the Senkai gate flashed through Ichigo's mind. Only me, huh? What am I supposed to do? She has gone back to Soul Society. He yelled with sudden rage. How am I supposed to go after her? How am I supposed to save her? I would I could, but I can't. He lumped his head in defeat. I can't. Kizuk followed his outburst. You really think there's no way? Ichigo looked up shocked. No way to get to Soul Society? Is there? Ichigo gasped. What do I do? How do I get there? Please. Tell me. Of course I'll tell you. He raised his finger. But I have one condition. Condition? Ichigo asked. What? For next 10 days, train fighting with me. Kizuk smiled. What? You're telling me to train? We don't have time for that. We don't know when Rukia will be killed over there. Forget training. We gotta get to Soul Society now and save Ruhi fell on his back and Kisuk pressed him down. You just don't get it. Kisuk sighed and pointed his cane at his forehead. I'm trying to tell you that the way you are now, you'll die there. And very fast add to that. 
he released bit of his riatsu to make his point. Can you win a fight with them? The way you are? You were on your top form last time, and you were like you young people like to say owned by them. He smirked of his own wit before continuing with more serious tone. This time, I allowed you to fight them. Because I thought that would be a lot faster than telling you that with your current strength, you wouldn't be the least bit useful in soul society. Well, perhaps as a good sacrifice, but that's about it. You're weak. That's a fact. Another fact is that when a weakling enters enemy territory, they call it a suicide. If you feel like kicking the bucket, feel free to jump of a building. Don't try to cover it with some heroic wills like to save Kachiki-san. Don't die for other people. He finally stood up and walked away. He noticed Yuruchi-san sitting by the door, looking at them. Soul Society customarily holds one month waiting period before execution of death row prisoners. That should be same for Kachiki-san. Execute. Ichigo jumped up again. It's different than how humans die, though. Kizuk pointed out. 10 days to bully you, 7 to open the gate to Soul Society, and finally 13 days once we reach there. Plenty of time. There was a moment of silence when he allowed Ichigo to go process all this quietly in his head. The bond of love is harder than any steel. His eyes peeked from under his hat. Can you really handle life and death situations for 10 days with me? Ichigo didn't even hesitate. You have to ask. Then it's settled. We will remodel you from top to bottom. We? Ichigo asked. Tessai-san, Naruto and myself. Kizuk smirked. We will show you what kind of world you have just entered. Where is he anyway? Ichigo asked looking around, surprised at the anger he felt when he was mentioned. Don't hold grudge against my son. Kizuk explained. It was me who made sure he couldn't come and help you. What? Ichigo asked a little louder than he had intended to. It was not like I was waiting for him or anything. He pouted childishly. Oh, he did want to come. He explained. But unfortunately, he wouldn't have been much of a help even if he had been there. I see Ichigo whispered, calming down quickly. So where is he? Ooh, I send him to do some special training by himself while we go through the basics. Hey. I fucking kill that asshole. Naruto yelled and slashed down with all the strength he had. Ooh oh. Harako gritted his teeth as he blocked it. He felt how the ground shattered under him from sheer power of the slash. Naruto disappeared and reappeared behind Harako and pulled Kinha out of her sheet. Harako jumped forward and managed to kick some rocks with his heel into Naruto's face. He blocked them with Kinha and stabbed forward with Ginha. Harako dodged this one too and blocked it with his katana. You've been awfully straightforward today. He smirked he shifted his katana in a way he could block both his opponent's blades. Did summiting happen? Nothing. Naruto yelled and broke the block and kicked Harako into gut. Then he swung Ginha and flock of Mamiji Lee slashed through air, impelling some rocks. What's with him? Rose asked confused as they watched from sidelines when Naruto kept maiming Harako violently. I heard that Shinigami in this town was called back by some serious figures. Hachi answered. And Yuhara-san didn't allow him to go and help that human to save her. Some kitty crap? Lisa asked. He really is just a brat. Just then Harako crashed into a boulder and spat some blood. He really is a brat. Love nodded. But he also carries quite a punch. Shinji. Switch with me. Hiyori jumped in and activated her mask. She appeared right behind Naruto and slashed at his head. He turned around, still had lots of anger to go around, blocked it with Kinha, and created a wall of golden Mimiji leaves between them. Hiyori summoned all her strength and broke through the wall and stabbed Naruto into chest. Damn. She cursed when he started to broke apart into leaves that impelled into her. Switch. Kensei yelled and kicked her out of the just before that would have happened and tapped her hand. Let's rock. Naruto panted but didn't slow down. He needed to blow at the steam or he would stick a zero up his father's ass. Luckily, wizards had felt sudden anxiety when they felt the big wheel turning and it showed. They were overflowing with power, and now Naruto had given them a perfect chance to do some heavy practice. Your Shiku. Naruto spat some blood and spit out of his mouth. An. Those who didn't know, your Shiku, please, take care of me, is written with the same kanji as. Go to hell. A. It was the last day of school before holiday. Ichigo was feeling anxious to start training with Slipper Hat. How are you feeling? He looked up to see Naruto standing there, without his mask or hat first time for months. Yo. Naruto. He muttered and watched as he sat down to his seat. How is it possible that no one in our school remembers Rukia anymore? 
he asked as he scanned the classroom. Everything was back to normal. Kigo was jumping like an idiot. Chizuru was trying to grope Orham and Tatsuki was preventing it. Ryo and Machiru were talking about something. Mizuro was texting with someone. It was like nothing had ever happened. You know that device that she used to erase people's memories about hollow hunting. Naruto answered locking his eyes with his textbook, careful not to look at the corner where Ryo was sitting, gracefully as always. When they caught Rukia-chan, they send a special team to deal with all possible people who could have been connected with her. They do an excellent job. And fast. I see. Ichigo muttered not listening really. So, your dad saved me. And he also told me that he can restore my powers back. Naruto raised an eyebrow. No wonder you felt somehow different from usual. Like a normal human being. It's kind of pathetic. Very funny. Ichigo shot a glare at him. Then after a while he asked. Do you think she can be saved? I was so powerless last time. The teacher walked into the class, calling names as she walked. Ichigo, last time, you were just a punk who couldn't even control his powers. Much as I hate to say it, after my dad is done with you, those two are well within your reach. He smirked as the teacher called his name. Hi. This is a surprise. She raised an eyebrow. No more mask and hat? I lost them. Naruto scratched his head sheepishly and others laughed. He sat down. After classes ended Naruto stood up. See you later Ichigo. You're not coming to the ocean? Kigo asked. I had a perfect idea for us to spend a vacation together. Sorry. I'm doing a trip to my folks' house. Naruto smiled. He didn't notice that many people locked their eyes on him. Your folks? Mizuro asked. Didn't you live in the city? Yeah, but I think it's about time that I pay a visit to my family house at the country. He answered and smiled. I'll see you lot after the break. He waved his hand and walked out of the classroom. Don't get yourself beaten to death. After he was done in the class, he stepped to the kendo hall where the last practice of the spring was just about to finish. Where the hell have you been? Kigo's older sister screamed when she saw him walking in. You missed the tournament and we lost because you weren't there. What you have to say for yourself? Naruto looked at the students at the hall, all looking right back at him. You've come a good way from what you started. He directed his words to them. I think it's the perfect chance for me to pull back from this club. E. What the hell do you mean? Mizuho screamed. Naruto smiled. Bye bye. He waved his hand and quickly ran away. With heavy feelings, he had to start cutting ties to this world. One by one. If he would have to invade Sarate, as a former vice captain he knew how full-hearted act it would be. First, he would have to face 13 squads. People like Hinata, Shikamaru, Chouji, Ikaku, Yumichika, Sakura and Ino. They maybe weren't that strong, but they weren't weak either. No one in Gate 13 was weak. Then the 13 vice captains. People like Kira, Kiba, Ran Chan, Nao Chan, Hisagi, Isini, Iba and so forth. People who he had drank with and had lots of hard and fun times with. Then the 13 captains. Like Hitsugaya, Kairaku, Yukitake, Soifen, Aizenichimaru Retsuba and Iro Taichu. People who he had looked up to and wanted to surpass for a long time. If me and Ichigo get back alive, I'm kissing him on the lips. I knew you were confused about certain dings, but that much. He turned around to see Hirako standing on a rooftop. Yo. What brings you here? We all know that you're about to make the first move in hundred years in Dishogi against Aizen. And we know that now if Dear Eva is a time to take a moment and live. It's now. He pulled out a large bottle of sake out of his pocket. Let's party. He smirked. Guys are already setting up a place at this bar we found. You coming? Naruto smirked. Sure. Little sake before battle seems like a good idea. Hey. While Ichigo was lying on the bottom of the pit, watching as his chain was eating itself, Yuruchi was giving some tutoring to three most promising people she had ever met. Sato and his hand and armor had great promising power in it. Orahim's healing and rejecting power were amazing. It was something like Hachijin could do even if it was still on immature and growing, but it showed the same promise. They were practicing their powers front of her the best they could in this place. Gotcha. A voice appeared behind her and hands wrapped around her. Not yet. With a smirk, Yuruchi jumped upward and then flipped backwards and landed on top of a long-haired girl. Naive little bee. But what really made Yuruchi feel intrigued was Ryo and her powers. It was similar to the powers of a Shinigami. 
her ability was almost exactly like Shunpo, and her control over Riyatsu reminded that of a Shinigami. And she was a natural. So natural that it made the legendary goddess of Flash excited to be able to teach someone like that again. Damn it. Ryo cursed and struggled to stand up. I was sure I could get you. Yuruji laughed. Little B isn't something that could catch a cat. Sane stop calling me that. Ryo cursed and disappeared from right under her and reappeared behind her new teacher. Yuruchi simply slammed her tail on her face. You still got lots to learn. She laughed and jumped away and landed on Sato's head. Little B must ask nicely if she wants something. Ryo grunted and jumped forward. She would catch that thing, even if it were the last thing she would do. Hey. After two days of absence, Naruto finally stepped inside his home. I'm home. When there was no answer, he guessed that everyone was in the training room. What's going on? He wondered when he landed on the bottom. Naruto he looked at his father who looked back. Have you cooled down? Depends. He muttered and glared at him. What's going on? He nodded at the large pit. Both Yururu and Jinta were spitting large drops of spit in there. Ooh, nothing. Just trying to make Kurosaki sent to become a Shinigami again. Naruto looked down the pit. That seems dangerous. He whistled. How is it going down there? Naruto? Is that Naruto? He heard Ichigo's suffering voice. What are you doing here? What do you mean? This is my house. He yelled back. How much do you feel like spitting? He muttered to himself and started gathering saliva in his lips. Don't you dare. Ark. You Sinova. Ups. Too late. Naruto laughed and high-fived with snickering Jinta. How long has he been down there? It should be over pretty soon. Kizuk answered. You know this way carries a certain risk. Naruto pointed out. What if he becomes a hollow? Unfortunate as it would be his voice trailed away. Just then, Riyatsu barged out of the pit. Naruto walked to the edge and glanced down in the strong current. It has begun. Let us wait and see. Naruto grunted angrily and jumped back. The current was getting stronger by the second. This is some serious power. He muttered when he saw huge weights fell down. Even Tessai has to go all out. Of course. Kizuk answered. He won't be able to control him if he doesn't. It lasted for a few moments. And by the second, the Riyatsu started to feel more and more like a hollows. Hey. Good day, Gamma Kintaichu, third seed in Yuzuka. Guards bowed respectfully to the couple of people who entered the sixth squad barracks. Kiba, wait here. White-haired man muttered gloomily. I just don't edit. His acting vice captain titled his head. Why did you had to come all the way over here yourself to get a statement from some idiot who allowed her powers be stolen away, Taichu? Jiraiya ignored him and entered the holding area. Kajigi Rukia. He looked at the young woman sitting her back turned towards him. Gamma can Taichu. Rukia stood up and bowed her head respectfully. She may be on death row, but she didn't need to be disrespectful to other captains. What I can do for you? Jiraiya tugged his hands into his sleeves. I'm here to exchange few words with you, if it's not too much trouble. Of course, but I've already left my official statement. Jiraiya raised his hand to quiet her down. I know and I've read it. But I still have questions. He pulled a chair from the wall. A gigai, gakongan, memory modifier and so forth. Those were some pretty high quality equipment. And you got them. Mind I ask, where? Rukia gulped. I'm sorry, but I cannot reveal my supplier. He made me swear not to. And before Jiraiya could open his mouth, she continued. And please, don't promise me anything or threaten me with anything. I know my fate is sealed and I have nothing else to lose. Anymore. Jiraiya looked at her for a moment before he gave up and sighed. I see. Goodbye then. He turned around and left the room. Outside, Kiba was almost brawling with the guards. When Jiraiya stepped outside, he was in one man's collar, but soon as he noticed his captain there, he let go. So, did you get anything out of her, Taichu? Yes. All I needed. Jiraiya whispered. All I needed. Kiba exchanged looks with guards and shrugged confused but didn't say anything. Then quickly ran after his captain who was exiting the building. A. A Zenpakudo and Damask. Naruto whispered and looked at his father. Dad, this is... I know. Yurihara answered with a whisper. But let us leave those things for now. He added when Ichigo smashed the mask with the hilt of his sword. Excellent. Lesson 2, clear. He clapped his hand excitedly and stepped forward. Now that you've recovered your powers, let us continue lessons. 
but Ichigo quickly stepped forward and hit Kisuke in his face with the hilt. Shut your trap. Naruto smiled happily to see his father withering in pain in his beat when Ichigo kicked him on the knee. What was that for? For spitting on my face. He screamed and then pointed at the father-son pair angrily. The second I came back to life was the second you two run out of luck. Because I swore to myself that I ever got out of there alive, I would make sure to kill you both dead. Kizuk stood up and smirked. Well, that's perfect. Let's use that energy and go straight to lesson 3. He took off his hat and placed on Naruto's head. Lesson 3 has no time limit. Knock my hat off my son's head with your zanpakudo and it's clear. He smirked. What? Naruto and Ichigo asked at the same time. If you can do that, you can have a chance of trying to fulfill that promise with me. Kizuk smirked. Naruto. If you please. Just so you know, I'm not doing this for you. He exited the gig eye and took a pair of bakans before placing them on his waist. Shall we? Wait just a minute. Ichigo yelled. Why do I need to fight him? I want to kill you. Naruto pulled from the hilt, revealing the blade. His father had taught him how to seal his zanpakudo different ways like he did it with his cane. Naruto made his own look like pair of bakans. I've been on shitty mood all week, so I won't. He jumped forward and slashed. Ichigo managed only barely to dodge the attack. What the hell? He screamed. Naruto smirked. You're Shiku Onigashimasu. This started a game of tag, Naruto chasing after Ichigo all around the training room. Tessai finally made his way out of the pit. How is it going, Jinja Dono? Tessai asked. Owner made Naruto to pull his sword, and it's getting really interesting. Jinja smirked. But not as interesting if Owner had done it himself. Just then, Naruto drove Ichigo to a corner. Stop it already. Ichigo screamed. If you want to stop, feel free to do it yourself anytime you want. He answered and kept waving around his katana. It was about time to Ichigo to remember that only Zanpakuto could attack a hollow and a Shinigami. So he should be safe, right? So he turned around, ready to attack and... Slash. His Zanpakuto snapped into pieces and flock of his hair fell to the ground. You let your guard down. Kizuk pointed out. He was bending himself on top of nearby rock. It belongs to a guy who's not a Shinigami, so it's not a Zanpakuto, so it doesn't matter if he cuts me, eh? Naive. Totally naive. He covered his lower half of his face with his fan. Show him, Naruto. Tadakai Tame Hogo. Ginha Kidzun. An. Fight to protect, Silver Leaf Fox. Naruto activated his katana, and it changed shape into the silver lined blade with a strange twist before the hilt. This is completely genuine Zanpakuto, this girl. He smirked at Ichigo's shocked expression. Zanpakuto's name? He whispered. Yes. Kizuk continued the lecture. Each Zanpakuto has its own name. And this is her ability. Naruto swung Ginha vertically. Fourth art. He yelled and one big slash broke the rock behind Ichigo and almost slashed him in half too. What just happened? Jinta asked as he and Yururu had been saved by Tessai. That attack was similar that of owner Zanpakuto's ability. Lining all Mamiji leaves into one long blade like form and using it like a really long sword. That was crazy. Jinta screamed as Rubel flew all around. Kisuke watched as Naruto cornered Ichigo more seriously than before. Taking every necessary step to break all the hope that the boy might have. It was imperative that Ichigo would feel threatened, so he would be forced to call his Zanpakuto's name. Or die. Wait, Naruto. Are you seriously trying to kill me? He screamed after another one of Naruto's new attacks. I'm going to save Rukia. Naruto answered darkly. The way you are now, you would just be dead weight. He pulled Kinha out of its scabbard. Hogokara Tadakai. Kinha Mamiji. An. Protect by fighting, golden leaf dotum, Wakazashi turned into a golden lined copy of its silvery sister. What the hell? You have two Zanpakudos. Ichigo stepped back. Naruto sighed. That's just stupid. Ginha Kitsune, Kinha Mamiji are two halves of one Zanpakudo. He raised his two blades. Ginha straight towards Ichigo, Kinha over his head. Every Zanpakudo is different. Yours, that vice captain's Rukia's older brother's, Rukia's own, mine. They are all different. Mamiji leaves flew around him, like a gentle wind was waving them. And if Ichigo wasn't so scared for his life right now, he would have thought it was kind of cool how they floated. What I want to know is what kind of Zanpakuto yours is. He jumped forward. Come at me, Ichigo. 
Kisuke followed from sidelines as Naruto did excellent job scaring their new live-in student. After all that the time they had been together, he didn't feel more proud than when he saw how he slashed his friend almost in half, with a very dangerous type expression. But seriously speaking, he was feeling nervous about letting Naruto go with them to the Soul Society. Not that he was weak. He was strongest to the group he and Yuruchi had planned to send, felines excluded, and could probably survive all what they had to throw at him. But what about his friends? There were many people that his son still missed in his heart. What if his son didn't want to come back after all this? He didn't think he could just let go after only a mere year. Or worse if she was there when they arrived Kisuke had cold shivers running down his spine just out of thought. He could kiss his little shop and free life goodbye. But what if she would definitely be happy to find out that her son was alive he could use this if he were to play his cards right. He dismissed those thought for the moment and turned to face the battling duo when Ichigo finally managed to call his Zenpakudo and threw a very familiar attack at his son. Naruto managed to block the attack with his Mimiji leaf made wall, but the hat flew away. He started clapping his hand excitedly. Excellent. He jumped between them. Lesson 3 clear. Just then Naruto appeared behind him and kicked him into his rear. Hard. That's for using me. He yelled and sheathed his swords. You better take it from here. He sat next to collapse to Jigo. You okay? Somewhat. He whispered before nodding off. I think I sleep. Naruto looked at his father who picked his hat up. What now then? Now, we will let him take his time and rest. Kizuk tapped the dust of his hat. You really had to allow him to ruin my hat, didn't you? Naruto glared at him. Be lucky you still have something to put that hat on. Yurihara smiled sadly. We can deal with our problems later. For now, let us concentrate on getting your friend ready for Soul Society. Hey. You too, great job today. You're really starting to get a hang of your powers. Yuruchi nodded approvingly. Yasha. Or him not at all powered up. I feel like eating well tonight. Thanks, Yuruchi-san. Sato nodded and tightened his fist. Do you think we will be ready for Soul Society by the time Ichigo is? None of you will be ready by that time. Not even him. She answered while her tail waved back and forth. But that's not something you should be worried about. She nodded at Sato. You should try to concentrate more power into a single spot. Now you're just throwing it all around. Or him, try to harden yourself. You need to be able to call your power the moment you need to. Moment of hesitation can mean life or death. Hi. She nodded somewhat depressed. Don't feel down, Inoue-san. Sato tried to comfort her. Your powers are amazing, I'm sure of it. The cat turned around to look at Ryo who was doing some basic stretching to her feet. Anyway, for humans, amazing job. Same time tomorrow. B. Stay behind. I have something to show you. Ryo looked first at her friends and then at the cat. What? I hate to admit that I can't teach the other two much, but you, I can. She smirked. You too. Get home. It's time to give her some private tutoring. And don't come back no matter what happens. As Zato and Orham walked away, they looked over their shoulders at the factory. What do you think that was about? She asked confused. I don't know. Sato answered truthfully. But I'm sure it's nothing dangerous. Just then the factory flashed brightly and lots of smoke came out. Eek. Ryo's voice echoed through the night. Hey are you sure it's okay to leave her alone like this? Orham whispered. Yes, I hope. Sato gulped. Hey. A woman. Ryo screamed and pointed her finger at Yuruchi who was standing there in her human form. And her naked human form. WWWWW what? Is this possible? We can leave that for some other time. Yuruchi smirked. Your powers are most similar to mine. That's why I need to show my true form. What do you mean? I thought you were a cat. Cats don't talk, silly. Yuruchi smirked. But you I thought hollow Shinigami all this too much. Ryo collapsed quietly on her back. Yuruchi laughed to herself as she bent over to wake her up by slapping her cheek gently. This never gets old. Finally, Ryo woke up quickly sat up. She did it so fast that Yuruchi had no chance to pull away, so she landed her face right between her mounds. After a few more minutes of hysterical embarrassment, freaking out, paranoia and pure fear, Ryo started to calm down. DDDD does anyone know? She asked when she finally got her voice back. Expect Kisuke, Tessai and Naruto, no one. And keep it that way. She smiled. 
I love to watch all the different expressions people have when they find out. Yours is the best one so far. T thanks. She whispered before blushing and looking away. Could you get some clothes? It's kind of embarrassing. What? I'm the one who isn't wearing anything, right? And we don't have time for that. She sat front of her and cleared her throat. Consider yourself lucky. You're about to get private tutoring from the goddess of Flash herself. People were willing to kill, and I mean that literally, to get something you're about to get. Ryo had hard to concentrate knowing that there was gorgeous sexy dark-skinned, well-endowed Hatai sitting right next to her not even trying to conceal her bits. Could you please she whispered. What's the matter? Yuruchi asked confused. I don't have anything you don't. I'm not so sure about that. Ryo muttered and quickly stole a glance of her buffers that seemed to be bigger than her head. Well, you better get used to it because we need to start training in soon. Yuruchi smiled that made her look more like a cat than when she had been in cat form. Hey. In Sarate, the third squad barracks, Shikamaru was playing hooky with his friend from sixth squad, Chaoji. Did you hear about that Kachiki? He asked quietly. They say she gave her powers to a human. What an idiot. It's not her fault. Chaoji shook his head and continued munching something he had found. It's that town. I'm telling you. It's not normal. Then he thought for a moment. Wasn't she close with Naruto? I mean, Senju Fuku Taichu? Yeah if you could call that. Shikamara muttered and tried to remember. She nodded to him as they passed each other which was more than anyone else got. It really is hard to think that he is gone. Isn't it? Chaoji sighed. Already a year. Yeah. Shikamara looked at the clouds. Time really flies, doesn't it? Hey. Hinata was doing some office work when her superiors, she really hated all of them when they did this, were on businesses. You can file those there. She smiled to one squad member who was carrying a report. Then she tightened her jaw. Why the heck am I only the fifth seat when I do all the work from Taichu to my own? Then her eyes landed on a piece of paper that needed vice captain seal. She took a hold of it quietly. Naruto-kun. It really was over a year already when her long-term crush had left and never came back. Crush had faded after time, but she still missed him. His bright smile and playful nature would make anyone smile. Then she heard a knock on the door. Enter. She hid the paper, not sure why, but did when fourth squad member Haruno Sakura stepped in a smile on her face. Sakura-chan. Hi, Hinata-chan. How is it going in here? Busy as always. Hinata nodded at the pile of paperwork behind her. It was large mountains waiting her to start. What about you? Well, the hospital was quiet, so I decided to visit the market to get some ingredients and thought to visit few places on the way. I was on my way to meet up with my niece and when I remembered that you're probably being surrounded by paper again. Very funny. Hinata answered with dry voice. Well, sorry. Sakura giggled slightly. I just couldn't resist. Anyway, what's new with you? Still doing your duty and nothing else. Pretty much I guess. Hinata shrugged as she stamped another paper with a seal. It's not like I get a chance to have a much of social life with a squad like this. Sounds like you don't want to have a chance. Sakura pointed out. What do you mean? She asked skeptically. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The pink-haired woman stood up. Anyway, I'll head out. See you again. Sakura left the third squad barrack smiling happily. True, third squad always reminded her of that stupid brat who she had once told to clean up the floors and who had asked her to a date all the time, but the time was moving forward. She was more worried how her captain and vice captain were improving. Naruto had been very close to both of them. He had been an idiot, but he had been kinda sweet. Happy all the time. He and Hinataru had been quite a pair of troublemakers back in the day. Or rather, he had been a troublemaker and pulled his friend with him. Fourth Squad had never been safe when he was around. Not even the awful dread of former Tsune Teichi's wrath had managed to control him. Letting Naruto to slip away from her mind she walked through Sarate, heading towards Eleventh Squad barracks. Hi. She smiled sweetly to the guards who couldn't help but smile like pair of idiots and opened the gate to the pretty lady. Do you know if Nisan is around? Haruno Fuku Taichu? She should be with Taichu. Thank you. Sakura smiled and walked past them. Just then a huge figure stepped right front of her. Ken Kun. She smiled happily to the large one-eyed man. Thank you for your work, Kenpachi Taichu. An. If anyone knows how it's written in Japanese that it's Karamaster or whatever it was, please tell me. 
Guards bowed their head into Yakuza-like greeting. Kinpachi didn't even look at them. He concentrated his one eye at Sakura. E, what brings you here, Sakura? Is it the candy day already? He asked. S-A-K-U ra. Something landed on Sakura's shoulder. Good morning, Sakura-chan. Nisan. Sakura screamed to the person who wrapped around her shoulders and started to dance around frantically. Get off me. She tried to shake the pink blob off her shoulder. Get off me. I'm serious. Get off me. Ni, nee, ni. Nee. Did you find yourself a husband yet? Yuchiru asked all giddy and happy. If you haven't you can always marry the cue ball from my squad, right Ken-chan? Ikaku? Why should I care? Kenpachi scratched his chest. Nisan. Please. Stop hitching me up with your weirdos. Sakura screamed frustrated and finally managed to throw her sister off. I'm not interested of anything like that at the moment. B. But I want you to be happy. I am happy the way I am. Sakura screamed. Kinpachi sighed bored as he lay down on the veranda, not really interested of his vice captain's and her sister's regular fight. All those years ago, she had picked up two little girls in the woods. Yuchiru had pulled her obviously younger and frightened sister with her to look at his cool sword. As years passed by, the one he named Sakura joined the fourth squad, and the one he named Yuchiru became his vice captain. But even when in different squads, they kept close connection with each other. I see that Sakura-san has honored us with a visit. Yumichika stepped next to the captain. You called, Taichu? Yeah I want you to go to the central archives. I need to file some things. With some things he means all his paperwork. Why always me? He whined. I don't wanna. Send someone else. Because you came faster than a kaku. Kenpachi answered bored. Now go. Fifth seat Yumichika sighed depressed. Sure and walked away. Taichu always picks on me. Poor me. He whined. He arrived the first squad barracks and then down to the hall into the central archives. Hello, Ichiha-kun? Are you there? Very angst-looking sixth seat of the first squad, Ichiha Sasuke appeared from behind the some shelves. What? He asked angrily. If you got something to file, put them there. He pointed at some direction. I'm busy. Is that any way to talk to a superior officer? Yumichika asked kindly. Maybe I should remind you of your place. You wish. Sasuke cursed. Leave those things and run back to that gang of yours. Yumichika considered his options. Ichiha Sasuke could be a trouble when fighting. Especially here, in the first squad barracks. But he couldn't just forget an insult like that. He had his pride as a member of the fighting squad, the 11th. He took a hold of the scabbard of his katana. Ichiha copied him quickly. They looked at each other into eyes for a moment. What's going on here? They both turned around to see young man with long black hair walking towards them. He was carrying the insignia of the second squad and Amitsukito. Nothing, Kirifuku Taichu. Yumichika smiled and quickly stepped away. Now they had witnesses which ruined everything. Sixth Zita Chiha and I were just having a friendly conversation about filing techniques. Young man looked both of them before handing couple files to Ichiha. Here. My captain wanted to these filed immediately. And without anything else, walked away. Vice captain of the second squad walked through gates of his barracks, and people bowed their heads to him. Where's Taichu? He asked from a passing squad member. In her office. The man answered quickly. Kiri nodded his appreciation and quickly made his way to the place where he knew his captain resided. Did you deliver those files? Small petite woman asked behind her desk. Haku? Kiri Haku, former main retainer and servant of Senju Naruto nodded. Of course. Good. Dismissed. I will leave to the vice captain meeting then, Taichu. Soifin barely acknowledged this. Haku left the room after bowing his head. After a year of waiting, he had left the Senju compound. Not because he wanted to, but because he didn't feel like being there without his master, even if acting head of Senju, Retsu advised against it. He left. First he had tried to find a way to get into the real world. He refused to believe that his master would die just by some low-life Jillians. So he needed to get to the real world fast as possible. But unfortunately, he needed an authorization to get there. It wasn't like Senjus had a Senkai gate of their own. That's why he had joined Gate 13 in the second squad. After a quick introduction with his new squad, his career had taken unexpected turns and promoted him to be the new vice captain of the second, removing the former vice captain out of the way. But even if he was making a career now, he never gave up hope. 
he would one day leave to the real world and find his master. Naruto-sama might be right on the verge of death, but he would not be dead. Not like this. That was what this loyal retainer had to do. Be patient and find him and bring him back. He arrived at meeting hall just in time to meet up with another vice captain. Eight squads Ice Nanao. Kirifuku Taichu. Greetings. Ice Nanao nodded politely. I Sama. He quickly bowed his head. You can stop calling me that, you know. She tried to smile uncomfortably. You and I are equals. No, we are not. He shook his head firmly. If this is still about that. We should hurry. Haku walked away quickly, leaving Nanao standing there alone. She quickly wiped a tear before stealing herself. It always hurt to see him because he was like a living reminder of what had happened. And she felt like he blamed her for this. If she hadn't been so hard on him, maybe he this hadn't no. She wouldn't go there anymore. Not ever again. It had been a hard year for her. It had taken months for her to actually accept the fact that this wasn't a joke but solid fact. He was gone and wasn't coming back. It was so hard to take. And the fact that Haku was there too always with his never give up attitude only made it worse. Hello Nanao. Always so cheerful Ranjiku stepped past her. What's a hold up? After first depression, she seemed to have moved on and never even think Naruto. Which made Nanao angry. They had been best friends. And not even a word of him or anything. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nanao muttered and quickly entered the meeting hall. Only half of the vice captains arrived in the end. Other half were scattered all around Soul Society in their duties. Hey. But Shigo dodged another close one when Kisuk swung Benham. That won't do. He shook his head disapprovingly. If you don't start standing for yourself, you will never get stronger. If I stay still I don't have a head. Ichigo screamed. While Kisuk was training Ichigo, he had sent Naruto and Tessai to prepare to the opening of the Senkai Gate. Naruto had his questions why not other way around, but saved them for later. It's not like he could get anything out of him even if he asked. Now, Naruto Dono. Raise your hands like this, and then form a sign like this. Tessai tapped his hands and moved them around. This is how we create the frame to the wall. It's important that you know your part when we finally begin. Why? Couldn't Ad do easy as that? Tessai sat there quietly for the moment. And when you're able to do this, I will show you what to do next. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Dad has something in his sleeve, doesn't he? I I I don't know what you're talking about. Tessai quickly rushed away sweating like sponge. I'm so leaving here and not coming back. He muttered as he started practicing the form he was asked to. A. One day, after training, Ichigo came to Naruto a serious look on his face. Naruto, can I talk with you? Sure. Naruto nodded and stopped his own training. What can I do? Tell me, why are you going to the Soul Society? Naruto looked up at the ceiling. Because Rukia-chan is his legacy. Who's? Ichigo asked. My Nikki. He answered darkly and took his keto stance and started exercises from the beginning, and Ichigo knew this conversation was over. He had learned lots of his friend who he had thought had been pretty simple for a long time. But all these revelations made it almost unbelievable to think that he was the same idiot who had often complained about his girlfriends and fought alongside him against all those delinquents. And in his head, he had always thought that they were somewhat equals in a fight. But now he knew that he didn't even compare. Naruto had shown that he had the one thing he himself really lacked. Experience. For a moment it seemed like he had decades of experience in his moves. But that was just stupid. A. Training was over. Ichigo was ready. He had gotten his Shinigami powers back and managed to reach his Shikai. Ishida had completed his seven-day non-stop training and was on his top form. Sato had managed to reach the level he was satisfied with his new armor. Orham was getting ready to fight. Ryo graduated from basic training she had gone through with Yuruchi, and now all of them were preparing for the biggest challenge of their small lives. Ichigo and other humans, Ishida excluded, went to follow the fireworks and prepare mentally for this. Naruto on the other hand didn't show up there. Not because he would think it would be awkward to be in such a situation with his ex-girlfriend, who for some reason was coming with them. Why? He had asked from Yuruchi and Kisuke the last night. Why is she coming too? We will need all the help we can get. Yuruchi answered. Naruto, they can handle themselves. Then she flashed her eyes. Or are you scared that your ex-girlfriends will meet there and form alliances against you? Naruto had answered by quickly leaving to his own farewell party. A. K. 
Harako raised his zake cup. Taunted we celebrate the departure of our youngest member, Naruto. He pointed it at him. Don get killed. Naruto smirked and raised his own cup back. I don't plan on it. And don't get killed by those girls in there. Love smirked. Trust me, if Gate 13 doesn't kill you, soon as your ex-girlfriend and other ex-girlfriend and best friend meet each other. Is that why you started building a memorial altar for me? He asked skeptically at the small altar that was little further away from them. You know it's bad luck. You always brag about how you're luckier than anyone else. Hiyori smirked smugly. Let's prove that theory. I hate you. He muttered. Anyway, remember to stay clear on Aizen, Ichimaru and Towson. Kenzie nodded. And don't trust anyone. You don't know who they might have managed to turn into a traitor. You shouldn't take any risks, Naruto-san. Hachi agreed. Watch your back. I don't have any personal grudge against them, to be honest. Naruto answered. But I can tell that if you guys, Dad, Yoruchi and Tessai were outplayed by him, then I think it's for the best to stay clear of him. Good. Rose nodded. And remember to give Jiraiya Taichu a warm greeting when you get there. Mashiro smiled. Don't lose your head. She smiled happily and raised her cup. Kanpai. Everyone smiled and raised their cups. Kanpai. After gulping down sake, Naruto stood up. I'm off. He smiled and waved his hand. We're waiting for you to get back. Lisa said firmly. It's not fun without you. Naruto left the building and walked through streets of the Kurkura town. How long has it been? He asked himself. It had been a simple recon mission of sort. Then his seizure had made him fall down this very same street where he was walking now. There he had met his father seemingly long ago. Naruto and Kisuk looked into each other's eyes seeing something familiar in there. Something that they had never even noticed missing until now. Have we met before? They asked at the same time. All because he had that that stupid disease that his father had accidentally created. Without that, he would have never collapsed on that street and met his father. It was like all planned. But even his father couldn't plan something like that. Family. He had his family. With few expectations. I wonder how mom is doing then it hit him. I'm so dead. I'm so dead when she finds out. A. Back in Seoul society, far, far away, a pair of women walked out of a gambling hall. Tsunade Sama, don't you think it's about time to go back home? Why? Well, I'm sure Retsu Sama misses you, don't you think? Tsunade sighed. I guess you're right. Let's head back home. Then she noticed another gambling hall right next to last one. After that one. We're never going home, are we? Shizun asked sadly from her pet pig, Tantin who oinked and answer. Hey. Ichigo and others received messages to come to the Yurhara shop immediately and met outside, and Kisuk showed them way inside and under the shop. Wow. Such a huge space under the store. It's so cool. Orham was surprised that made Tessai happy. Yes, yes. Kisuk tapped his hands. May I have your attention please? He smiled to his son. If you please. Naruto snapped his fingers and made the Senkai gate appear out of nowhere. Or just uncloaked it. But it seemed just as cool. This is the gate that unites our world with soul society. Kizuk explained again. Naruto and I have been working on it for last seven days. Real father-son quality time. Naruto muttered. I'm still angry of you by the way. I wouldn't expect anything else from you. Kizuk smiled and explained all the technical details left to be explained. Isn't there any way to make it safer? Ryo asked a little unsure of what she had just heard. Only safer way is to go through at the same gate as Shinigamis, and that is monitored very closely by them. Naruto interrupted. And that wouldn't even work for most of us. This gate is made by piling spirit exchangers atop normal Senkai gate. Spirit exchanger? Ichigo asked. Soul society is the world of souls. Kizuk continued. However, the only people who can move around in soul form are Shinigami Kurosaki-san and my own son. Naruto nodded to this. So we need to use this exchanger to turn you into spirits and send you there. So basically we can go there, even without our souls being dragged out of our bodies. Ishida confirmed. If we go through this gate? That's right. Kizuk nodded. But remember, four minutes at most. That is the longest we can do any longer than that, every one of you will be trapped into the space between worlds forever. As I said, sounds risky. Ryo whispered. Feel free to stay behind if you don't want to come. Naruto said coldly. I'm coming. And if it's speed, you don't need to worry about me. 
She exchanged smirks with the black cat sitting next to her. Trust in your hearts. Yuruchi said. I will guide you. If you have doubts, stay behind. You understand right, boy? All I got to do is to win, right? Ichigo asked. Exactly. Yuruchi agreed. Tessai activated the gate. Last preparations were made. Naruto, come here for a second. Kizuk waved his son for a moment. What? Naruto asked. I'll be okay, dad. I'm strong enough to survive. I don't out that. But here. He handed him a small pack of gay. Put this on when you arrive. Naruto opened the pack of gay. It was a like a carnival mask. What is this? It will keep your identity hidden from your friends there. It also blocks your riatsu so you won't be able to do much without removing it. Kizuk answered and placed his hand over his shoulder. Come home safely. And bring them with you. Naruto smiled. I will. See you when I get back. Naruto placed a white mask on his face that had two eye holes in it. Then he strapped his blades on his back, easy to access but not familiar to him. Which is why he did it like this. What's that for? Chad asked when Naruto stepped next to him. A precaution. Naruto answered and nodded to Ichigo. Whenever you're ready. Ichigo nodded. Let's go. Guy, I will stop here. I hope did you enjoy this video. If you do please leave a like, share and subscribe. And if you have any idea of new fanfiction. Let me know in comment section. Thanks for watching take care bye.